welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast today, and I hope you're one of those people who desires to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. To that end, my Bible is sitting open to Romans chapter 1, and I hope you can stop and get out your own copy of God's Word and join me there. Again, the passage, Romans chapter 1. In a moment, I want to encourage you to get a free sample packet of gospel tracts from us. One each of all of our English gospel tracts is in that sample packet. That's 40 different tracts. I'm going to highlight one of those tracts here in just a moment. By the way, this is our 81st year of us publishing gospel tracts and giving them out all over the world free of charge. So when I say I want to give you a free sample packet of our tracts, I mean absolutely that. In a moment, as I said, I'll highlight one of the tracts, but let me lead into our study time this way. Often you've probably heard somebody ask the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Once I heard what I think is probably the very best answer to the question, the man said, there's only ever been one good man, and that's Jesus Christ, and they crucified him. You and I are not good, so why should we expect anything less? I thought that was a pretty good Bible answer. My question today, though, is this. Why do people who are spiritually dead in sin and who do have Satan as their spiritual father, why do so many of these people do so many really good things? Why don't they live to the full potential of their sinful condition? Now, that question is what we plan to tackle today. Now, it's true. To be sure, this world has seen its fair shares of guys like Hitler and Stalin and the like, but so often you and I have seen people who are totally irreligious do morally good things. Why? Well, stay with us and we'll give a Bible answer to that. If you happen to be listening today in central Pennsylvania, we are on the radio there. I will be preaching beginning tonight at a missions conference through Sunday at the Puzzle Town Road Bible Church in Duncansville. We'd love to see you there. Come out for the meetings that we'll have there, and be I'll be looking forward to meeting you face to face. I mentioned our gospel tracks here a moment ago. One of the 40 tracks in that sample packet is this one entitled, It's Free. It is free. Now, almost all of our tracks, almost all of them, begin with a story that leads into the gospel. This one does not. This gospel track was designed to be handy and useful just to help a person walk through the gospel with clarity using the word of God. Because when you open this gospel tract up on the left-hand panel, this is the question, what is is free. The answer, salvation is free. And there are five Bible verses laying out that salvation is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. On the right-hand panel, as the tract is open, this is the question, where can I find it? Where can I find this salvation? The answer is in God's risen son. And there are four Bible verses typed out there that you can use to walk through each one declaring that eternal life is found in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. On the back panel is this question, when and how may I have it? And that is answered there. Oh, friend, this track will help you walk through the gospel simply, clearly letting the Bible be the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And this gospel track is designed just to be a tool for you and I to have handy when somebody says, how do I have eternal life? Or we challenge somebody to tell us what they think about eternal life, that we can open up and say, here is with clarity what the Bible says about the gift of salvation. And friend, a lot of people do not have a clear 
understanding of that at all. They've never been told the clear plan of salvation. Good tool, just one of the tracks in the sample packet. At the end of the program, my announcer will give our contact information. You can use it to give us your name and address, and we'll send you the free sample packet. If you are unable to stay to the end of the program, you can order the packet at our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open to Romans chapter 1, verse 24 begins this way. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. Jumping down to verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Stop, please, right there. We are presently walking through Romans chapters 1, 2, and 3 in a verse-by-verse fashion. These three chapters openly declare that all have sinned and that there's not one good person, no, not one. On Monday's broadcast, I took a slight tangent in our study. My question on Monday's broadcast was this, how perverted in our sinfulness are we really? I also put the question this way, just how dead are we when the Bible says we are dead in our trespasses and sins? My Bible answer then was that we are spiritually dead from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, and we read where God's Word says that our hearts are desperately wicked, and put succinctly, we are in an incurable and a without hope situation in our condemned state due to sin. Only when, by God's grace, moving in our hearts, that we are changed through receiving Christ and his redeeming work performed at Calvary and the empty tomb. Now, all right then, if we are all polluted down to our core, and we are, why then don't a whole lot more people live out a far more wicked and perverted life pattern? If you have a notepad handy, jot down these two words. Ready? Here they are. Common grace. Common grace. Now, you're not going to find these two words in your Bible. They are a label that Bible scholars have put on a Bible truth that we're going to look at today. Now, friend, listen, I believe in the Trinity, but that word Trinity is not in our Bible either. But the truth of the Trinity is the same is true for the term common grace. Now, what do I mean by common grace? Well, I'm referring to the work of God where God deliberately bestows on all people everywhere and in every era a measure of grace or kindness, Jot down these references. I'm going to be highlighting key verses in the Word of God. The first one is Psalm 145, verse 9. Psalm 145, verse 9, which says, The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Here's another one out of the Sermon on the Mount. It's Matthew 5, verse 45. It says, Your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Now, God there is showing grace and kindness on all people, even rebellious, unholy people. Try this verse out of Luke 6, verse 35. Again, it's Luke 6, 35. Jesus says, love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. The verse goes on to say why. It says, for he, God, is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Now, God is showing kindness on evil, unrighteous people. Here's one more. The book of Nahum, chapter 1. Verse 3, it says that God is slow to anger and great in power. Well, let me throw one more in here. Micah chapter 7, verse 18, which says that God delighteth in mercy. Now, the reason God shows evil, perverted sinner this common grace is twofold. Two reasons. Number one is this. God is being gracious so that sinners will be able to see his kindness and in that be brought to the place of repentance of sin. 
We're told that over in Romans chapter 2 and verse 4. God wants people to be saved, so he shows his truth in creation. He is slow to anger, gracious, and it bestows kindness upon evil people, giving them opportunity to repent and be saved. The second reason God does this common grace is this. God is using this grace to hold back sin from being so wicked, so wretched, that we can live on earth and have a sense of pleasantness here. There is a truth that I have chuckled at many a time found in the book of Exodus chapter 34. There God told the Jewish people that once they got into their promised land, they were to go to Jerusalem three times a year for special festival times, for holy days. But God says that while they are there, God would work in the hearts and the lives of their wicked neighbors that they would not want to to go after their land, because normally just the men went for these holy festival times. The women and children were left back home unprotected. God said that he would cause their neighboring people to not desire the land of the Jews during the days they went to holy festival time. In short, God was restraining sin. There are other places where God holds back sinners from doing all the evil that is in their hearts that we could go to. But the one I want to emphasize right now is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians 2 says that right now, in the day and age in which we are living, the Holy Spirit is restraining sin, holding back sin in our world. He is not letting sinfulness to be as sinful as it can be, but during the time coming called the tribulation period, we're told that the Holy Spirit's restraining hand will be lifted. And that's why we read all about the death and perversion happening there in the book of the Revelation. In Romans chapter one, I began reading at verse 24. And we're going to get to that verse starting in tomorrow's broadcast. But in Romans one, beginning at verse 24, we're going to see the evil depths of the human heart. Jeremiah 17 says that the human heart is desperately wicked. It it was without hope. There's no hope for the human heart left to itself. The only hope for any sinner, for all sinners, is not in the restraining grace of God. Praise God for his restraining grace that you and I do have the ability to enjoy some life. We expect our judges and our judicial system, as imperfect as it is, to give us a far great measure of right judgment on situations that come before and our civil government holding back evil in our world. But the whole only hope for sinners is not this restraining grace on all men, but it is the gospel of grace found in the person of Jesus Christ. That's a sinner's hope. It's the only hope. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the only way. I am the life, the only life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.